Welcome back to Old School Sports, and thank you so much for watching. We are uh, continuing our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Kansas City Royals here today. Uh, final couple months of the regular season. It is Thursday, August 1st. Some things are going well. Um, attendance is at a, on pace for another record season for the Royals. Um, we're doing very well financially. We're investing a lot in scouting and player development. Uh, but on the field, it's been a disappointing season. We are 51 and 57 right now. We have lost our ace pitcher, uh, Trevor Rogers, for the rest of the season to an injury. Um, and we are underperforming um, incredibly. We are nine wins below our Pythagorean projection. Uh, theoretically, we should be 63 and 48. So um, we should be competing with the Twins to be winning the American or the American League Central. Uh, instead, we are way out in the division, and we are four and a half out of a wild card. Uh, we didn't do too much at the trade deadline. We actually traded away a couple of our veteran relievers who we were unlikely to bring back next season. Um, added a little bit of um, talent for the minor leagues, but more importantly, we're able to bring up a uh, couple of young prospects on to the major league roster, notably Austin Roberts, um, who is going to go in as our closer. Got some incredible stuff, three great pitches, and had been having a really good year at Omaha with a 1.82 ERA. Uh, you can see in two appearances at the major league level, he's 0-1 with one save. So mixed results for Austin Roberts so far. And then um, we also brought up uh, Jonathan Bolin. Um, he's going to be making his major league debut shortly, 27-year-old reliever. Um, who uh, did a good job down in Omaha this year with a 2.87 ERA. And chances are that uh, shortly we will be bringing up uh, potentially either Spencer Bauer and or Will Klein from uh, AAA also. Um, Spencer Bauer just pitched uh, yesterday 93 pitches. Number 25 prospect in baseball. Um, we've got to do something to try to turn things around, especially without Rodgers in the rotation. So I have a feeling after a couple more days of rest, we will be bringing, bringing the big prospect Spencer Bauer up to the majors and hoping that he can uh, do something special over the last couple months of the season as we try to get back into the wild card hunt. And a little bit more bad news for the Royals. Uh, Melvin Moreno, who has been our starting second baseman since Nico Horn Horner went out with that arthritic elbow, um, is going to be banged up for about a month with a strained PCL. Um, we've loved his glove ever since we signed him as a minor league free agent. And uh, he's batted 269 this year, which has allowed him to put up a 2.4 war given his uh, great glove. So... Really happy with that addition to the roster. Unfortunate that he's going to be going on to the IL, so we're going to have to uh, bring up somebody else to see if uh, we can keep winning some games here. We have won three in a row to get back to 500 at 57 and 57, moved up to second place in the AL Central. So uh, we are going to give it as good a fight as we can to hopefully uh, get it back above 500 and then hopefully make a run at a wild card here. And we're not really going to be fair to Jonathan Bolin. Uh, he didn't pitch great in his uh, first major league appearance here. Uh, gave up seven hits and four walks and five innings. Um, but um, we're going to send him back down to the minors. Um, and we are going to bring up Spencer Bauer, um, one of the top prospects in the game, ranked number 25. Um He's only pitched five games at Omaha this year, but has put up a 3.38 ERA uh, coming back from an injury right now, but did go 93 pitches five days ago. Um, you know, hopefully he can he can be the next Trevor Bauer. Um, I, I don't think that's what we're actually going to get from him, but if he can uh, at least replace what Bauer was doing, um, you know, it gives us a chance to hopefully uh, hopefully compete for this playoff spot here. 
And then we're also going to figure out a way to get Will Klein up to the major league team. Um, nice profile, has done fantastically down in AAA this year with a 1.25 ERA for the 24-year-old. Um, might have to wait until September roster expansion to get him up, but he is the um, next arm that's going to be joining the joining the major league pitching staff for us. It's just a matter of whether we'll wait for an injury or we'll be waiting uh, about uh, three and a half, four weeks till we get to September call-ups. And we also just got Brad Keller back from the IL, who uh, will head our rotation now with Rogers gone. So that actually means that um, Matheny wants to use Spencer Bauer as a reliever. Um, you can see he has had a uh, dazzling start to his major league career. Two games, four innings pitched, and 12 strikeouts over those four innings. So he has every out that he has recorded in his... Uh, or not every out, but uh, 12 out of the six, six, no, every out. If I could do some simple multiplication, yeah, every out that he has recorded in his major league career so far has been via strikeout. So um, maybe he will be the jolt that this team needs. You can see we have started to string together some wins. Uh, the record is up to 62 and 59, still six games out, but a game and a half out of the wild card at this point. So um, we're going to try to piece things together despite the loss of our ace. And Nico Horner, who's been out for, uh, I think, close to three or four months, um, Back and healthy, we're going to give him a quick rehab assignment down in the minors for just a couple days to hopefully shake off a little bit of the rust. And then uh, we'll have our starting second baseman back, which will be particularly helpful with uh, Melvin Moreno on the IL. Eddie's Leonard has been starting for the last few days for us at second base, but um, he's competent defensively at that position, but certainly um, would much prefer to have Nico out there every day. So hopefully after a couple days of rehab, um, that will be the direction that we head. And of course, right when we're starting to feel optimistic with Nico Horner coming back and uh, a surge to a 67 and 60 record with an eight and two record, three win eight and two in our last 10, three wins in a row. I uh, just found out that Kyle Lewis is a little banged up with wrist soreness. Going to have a moderate impact him on him on our starting center fielder for the week. Um, it's kind of slowed down a little bit, batting just 222 with just a 77 OPS plus and only a WAR of 0 0.9 for the season. So um, he got off to a bit of a better start than that. Um, has been a bit disappointing in terms of the offense, but when you compare it to what we used to be getting at uh, center field in the lineup from Michael A. Taylor in terms of the bat, still a, a nice upgrade to have Lewis out there. But hopefully if he gets past this uh, wrist soreness, he can, um, he can um, you know, hit better down the stretch. We'll try to give him a few days rest. Uh, presumably Kike Hernandez will step into center field for us. Um, not optimal, but if it's something that we need to do for a few days and we can avoid putting uh, Lewis on the IL, um, that's probably the way to go. Although I guess theoretically we could um, could just bring up Nico Horner, Horner now, but we'd like to give him another day or two. So we've been struggling a bit lately, 68 and 65, but only four and a half games back because fortunately for us, the Twins have lost five in a row. We're three and a half back for the wild card. Um, so still uh, still on the outside looking in, obviously, when it comes to making the playoffs. Going to have to uh, string string a big week together, you know, winning, you know, five, five and two, six and one kind of week and uh, probably do that more than once to uh, really put ourselves in a more favorable position for the playoffs. But we're only a few days away from September roster expansion when hopefully we can bring some more, uh, more youth and uh, power hopefully up to the team to help, uh, help us in the push for the playoffs here down the stretch of the 2024 season with these Royals. And we've made it to September roster expansion. Um, 
71 and 67 record, still four and a half behind the Twins, uh, only two and a half out of the wild card. So we are in the mix to have a winning record and certainly in the mix to make it to the playoffs. But we're going to have to play better in September than we have for uh, quite some time to get there. Although actually the month of uh, the month of August is probably when we look at the numbers about what we're going to need to do in September. If I look at... Uh, Team statistics, yeah, 17 and 10 in the month of August. If we're able to put another uh, another month of being seven games above 500 together down the stretch here, that's probably about what we'll need to be a playoff team. So that is certainly a goal. Let's see if we can have another month where we are uh, seven games above 500. We were four games above 500 in April, five games over in May, and seven games over in August. Um, you know, if we can be kind of five, six, seven games over 500 over the last month of the season, uh, that should help get us close to where we need to be. You can see 71 and 67 right now. Pythagorean suggests that we should have 80 wins. So we are definitely capable of... Um, playing better than we have in, in making a run for the playoffs. But we'll see how this last month of the season goes. Looking at um, September roster expansion, um, for pitcher, you know, it's either Will Klein or R.J. Dabovich, who we um, had to send down to make some room. Dabovich has pitched really well down there. Um, Klein um, obviously has also pitched incredibly well down there. I think we'll give uh, Klein the first opportunity to join the major league roster. And then as far as uh, another position player, um, we've got our good old buddy Melvin Moreno coming off the IL. So we'll put him back onto the major league roster here and see what the team looks like our rotation down the stretch Keller Wisniewski Ross Bubich and Suarez so pretty much what the rotation would have been before we picked up Trevor Rogers we'll see whether those guys can do a good job for us um, Spencer Bauer has still been an absolute godsend really glad we brought him up interesting that Matheny is not starting him maybe we should think about four starting him because in 16 and a third major league innings he has 29 strikes Breakouts, a 0 0.55 ERA and a 1.26 Sierra. So he has been fantastic here making his major league debut towards the end of the season. Hopefully he can continue to uh, play well for us down the stretch. And the last week has been a rough one for the Royals. We're back to 500 at 73 and 73. Lost two in a row. Lost seven of our last 10 and we are quickly uh dropping back five games back from the wild card with uh two teams between us and the orioles um you know it's it's put up or shut up time for this team at this point um you know looking at the schedule we do have some divisional games ahead of us with the white Sox today followed by uh three at Detroit, and then three at Oakland. Um, Going to be a real important week for us. Interesting that we finish with six in a row against Cleveland. A, uh, and they are all at home. That is a really funky schedule for us to finish. So we do have nine games in a row at home against the Orioles and the Indians to finish off the season. Um Indians are a team that we're going to have to get by to either get involved in the division or the wild card. And uh, the Orioles are also a wild card team uh, right now. So we're going to have nine games at home against two of the three teams that we are chasing. So um, if we can string some wins together over the next uh, week and set ourselves up so that those uh, last nine games are going to be real important against the Orioles and the Guardians... I think that's about all we can hope for right now. So um, looking at the schedule, let's hope that we can do some damage against the White Sox and then on the road at Detroit and at Oakland over the next uh, next week. Um, Oakland and Detroit both have losing records, so hopefully we can uh, 
string a couple of series wins together. It would be nice to get this last game against the White Sox today, and then if we can take two out of three against uh, both Detroit and the A's on the road, that would be a perfect scenario for us, but obviously winning that many games on the road is going to be tough, and you can just look at the calendar here that it's been a uh, rough start to September for, for our team thus far. And we ultimately did what we wanted to do. We took that last game against the White Sox. We took two out of three in Detroit, and then we took two out of three in Oakland. So we are 78 and 75, uh, four and a half games behind Minnesota. We are four games out for the wild card, um, but our last nine games, we've got three at home against Baltimore and then six at home against Cleveland. So the schedule sets up to give us a chance. We're going to probably have to win. If we win seven of those games, I'd feel pretty good about our chances. But obviously a 7-2 and two finish is uh, not going to be easy to achieve. But um, we're still alive. So nine games left in the season, uh, four and a half out of the division, four out of the wild card, probably need to be seven and two at a minimum to even have a chance of getting into the playoffs. Let's see how they go. First game of the series against Baltimore. Lost. 8-5, to five, not a great start. Still four and a half back in the division, but uh, going up against Clayton Kershaw, who's pitching for the Orioles now today. Going to be a tough matchup for us. Another loss. Uh, we're only one game above 500 now, five and a half back in the division. Uh, getting close to being mathematically eliminated, I am imagining at this point. Um, Still only four back for the wild card because it looks like both Texas and Toronto have been losing as we have also been losing. Actually, everyone involved except the Orioles has been losing. So it was a great opportunity if we had been able to beat them. We're five and a half back for the division, so almost eliminated for the division at this point. Um, really need to get this final game of the series against the Orioles to have any hope at all heading into those last six against the Guardians. And I know it's quite compelling to watch uh, my computer not be responding here as I'm trying to sim this last game of the series. 7-4 to four win, so um, although we've got a note here, does this mean we're already eliminated? No, probably not. Next opponent is the Guardian, so uh, got the win there. So six games left for the Royals. All of them are at home. All of them are against the Cleveland Guardians. We are four and a half out of the division and we are four out of the wild card. Um, need to jump over the Guardians and then get past uh, the Rangers also. The Orioles and Wild, the Orioles and Blue Jays, the only way we can even tie them now is to go 6-0. and So really have to hope that we go 6-0. and And if we go 6-0, and we will be past the Guardians. If we go 6-0, and we just need the Rangers to... Um, lose several games and then we can sneak in but uh it's it's going to be tough um we probably need to be perfect the rest of the way out which is going to be difficult to do going up against mike clevenger in game one of the series and a seven to three loss um so that should just about do it for us unfortunately Five games out of the wild card with five games to go, and five and a half out of the division with five games to go. So we are one loss away from the dream ending. And uh, once we are eliminated, um, then the big goal is going to be to see if we can at least uh, maintain a winning record and hopefully improve on the 82 and 80 record we had last year. We did get a win against Cleveland, 11 to two, to get to 80 wins. 
So four games out with four games to go. We're done in the division, still clinging desperately to hope, hoping that we sweep the last four games and that the Texas Rangers don't win again. That is the only way that we are going to be in the playoffs this year. So a long shot for us. We did get another win, and the Rangers got another loss, so we are still alive. We've guaranteed ourselves a 500 season. Playing game 160 right now. And my computer is slow for whatever reason. Oh, let's see the result, please. Please end this pain of waiting for this season to finally mercifully be over. And we win again 9-2, to two, but the Rangers did win, um, so we are eliminated at this point. Um, Kansas City, devastated. Um, I don't know if we're really devastated. We've kind of seen this coming for some time. Um, 82-78, and 78, so we were 82-80 and 80 last year, so the big goal at this point is to win at least one game so we improve our record from last season. But looking at the expanded standings, just amazing. Um, our plus 115 rud differential is the best in the entire American League, and uh, there are four teams in the National League that are much better than that. San Diego, the Dodgers, the Cardinals, and the Phillies. But um, theoretically, we should have a 92-68 and 68 record. Theoretically, we should have the best record in the American League. And instead, um, we have been eliminated from the playoffs. So... One of these years, we are going to outperform our Pythagorean expectations, but uh, this was not the year for it. 17-23 and 23 record in one run game certainly didn't help, but um, let's hope we can you know, win a few of these final games against the um, Guardians and at least finish the season on a high note. Of course, lost 8-7, to seven, so last game of the year as we try to hopefully get to at least 83 wins, which would make us... Um, one better than we were a season ago. And we did get the win against Cleveland on the final day of the season to finish at 83 and 79. So a disappointing year for us. Um, the only thing that is positive is that we did do slightly better than last year. So we have been steadily improving the team. Just hasn't happened as quickly as we had hoped. Uh, attendance actually dropped off down the stretch, which is a bit unfortunate. Fan interest has fallen to a 61, which is not optimal. Looking at our ownership goals, though, um, goal was to achieve a winning record, which we did goal was to improve our home runs. We got to ninth from 14th, and uh, we are continuing to make progress on our goal to improve attendance. So um, not a lost season, but uh, definitely one where we are going to be thinking about the lost opportunities simply because uh, we just underperformed um, so much. You know, 10 games below where our run differential suggested we should be is just incredibly disappointing. And then, obviously, the um, loss of Trevor Rogers, extremely disappointing also. Still um, five weeks that he's going to be hurt, but obviously the expectation is that he will be ready to go next season for us. Um, but clearly a 1-5 in five record um, from who we thought was going to be our ace was not what we were hoping for when we brought him on board. He's going to be up for arbitration this year in the off season. Obviously, would like to bring him back. Um, was hoping that maybe the injury would uh, lower the arbitration expectations, but still the same as they were pre-injury: eight point four million for next year, and then twelve point one million in his final year before uh, he will be a free agent. So, we are going to have a lot of big decisions to make this off season. Uh, but before we get to those, in our next episode, we're kind of do a deep dive on exactly how this uh, team performed, um, who were the overperformers 
who are the underperformers and what is our game plan as we head into the off season. So we will be back with a complete season recap in our next episode. Uh, until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.